Oh, so limitless. Hey. Hey, lovelies. It's your girl, Chanel. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, make sure you click the subscribe button so that you guys can get weekly videos from your girl. And if you do want to get notified as to when I make my posts on Mondays, then you can also click the bells button down below. So today I'm going to share with you guys the mistakes that I've found that I've made personally um, with my natural hair. I've been natural now for about four or five years. Whenever I started my YouTube channel pretty much is when I first did my big chop and I've been documenting my journey ever since. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys the mistakes that I found that I've made and hopefully they can help you prevent these mistakes or hopefully you guys can relate. If you guys can relate or if there are other things that you find that I'm missing and other people may benefit from, then definitely comment below and let us know so that we can all learn from each other. The first tip I would recommend is to not jump on every bandwagon. When I first started as a natural, I was so ready to explore everything. So I would be watching a whole bunch of YouTube videos, I'd be reading on things, and people would be like, hey, don't use, they'd say, don't use uh, shampoos with sulfate, or castor oil works always to thicken your hair, or coconut oil is the god of all natural hair. And so, I used to try all these products, try all these products, waste a whole bunch of money purchasing all these products to try in my hair. And I found out that even though I may have had the same hair type as someone else whose videos I, w I was watching, my hair did not react the same way as a lot of people whose videos I was watching. So for example, I have very fine 4C hair. So um, cast oil for me does uh, weigh down my hair and it actually dries it out. Um, for example, sulfate free shampoos, they say that's healthier for your hair, but for me, I find that that dries out my hair. Coconut oil, for example, they say that is the heaven, people lather coconut oil in their hair, that stuff weighs down my hair and dries it, that, dries it out so much. So because people are saying you should do this or you should do that or you shouldn't buy products um, that, with words that you can't spell or whatever, it doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. It may work for someone else but it may not necessarily work for you. And that was something that I had to learn the hard way after purchasing so many products and realizing that half of them don't even work in my hair. And I just honestly purchased them because I saw someone with my hair type or who looked like they had my hair type and I thought, hey, if it works for them, it's gonna work for me. And that is not always the case. Don't hop on every bandwagon. Be free to try different things based on what you do see on YouTube or what you do see or what you have learned. However, don't just hop on every bandwagon just because. Do your research, learn about your hair before you actually go and invest your money into these products because a lot of times you can just end up wasting your money. If something's working for you, stick with it. You don't have to venture out, in my opinion. The second tip that I would recommend is to not throw away all products that you find don't work in your hair after your first try. So a lot of people will buy a whole bunch of products and after using it for one time they realize that you know what, this doesn't work for me. That may not necessarily be true. A lot of times we may not know how to use products a certain way. Sometimes we have to combine them with certain other products to make it work effectively in our hair texture or in our hair type or in our hair in general. Uh, although I have 4C hair and someone else has 4C hair, they may be using Gorilla Goops, you know the Gorilla Snot Gel for example. It may work for them, but it may not work for me. I may need to add a whole bunch of water first before applying that product. So you should experiment with, it, experiment with those products in various ways before you decide to, you know what, dump it. And do your research. That's the only way you're going to figure out if something works for you or not. Don't just jump, dump a product right after purchasing it and using it once because you never know that product may actually be the heaven sent thing for you if you just learn to use it the right way. Sometimes you just have to get the right person to teach you how to use that product the right way and it will be the best product you've ever used in your life. If you don't know how to use that product the right way, then of course it's not going to work or be effective for you and you may have just felt like you waste your money when in reality that product may work for you, you just got to figure out how to use it the right way. Tip number three, I would recommend not manipulating your hair very frequently. If you can get a style, if you could style your hair maybe once or twice a week and leave it for the rest of the week, that is better than having to style your hair every single day. And the reason is because the more you touch your hair, the more you play in your hair, the more you manipulate your hair, the more it can lead to breakage, the more it can lead to knots that you're gonna have to cut off, the more damage that can occur as opposed to if you just left your hair and allowed it to grow. For me, I realized the more I combed through my hair, the more breakage I had, the less growth I had. 
The more I actually put my hair in a protective style and just left it alone, the less manipulation I had, the more my hair grew. So I would say the less manipulation you can do to your hair, the better it is for you and the better it is for your hair to actually grow. The fourth tip that I still find that I cannot learn from is do not just let anybody do your hair. I remember I trust this lady, she's like, yeah, I do hair, blah, 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 blah. This girl damaged my hair the first time she straightened my hair and I was so mad. I was so mad. It's the first time. I feel like it was my first time after being natural that I straightened my hair. I was so excited to get this press and this girl straightened my hair and I was so pissed. I actually have a video on that, I believe. But she damaged the front of my hair. So I would recommend just not, don't let anybody do your hair. You should only allow people who do, who specialize in natural hair to do your hair. Um, and if you don't even feel comfortable with that or if you can't afford to do that, because doing your hair in general could cost a lot of a shit ton of money. Sorry for the swear words. Um, learn how to do your hair yourself. Learn how to take care of your hair and learn how to um, ensure that you're not damaging your hair. Even this lady who did my hair, and I was so mad when I was doing it, but I knew she could braid, so I really wanted her to get my hair done. Um, she took the blow dryer, didn't put any moisture in my hair. My hair was dry as hell, okay? And she took the blow dryer on hot heat, combed out my hair. My hair, my ends were just popping out, popping out, popping out. And I was just like, oh my God. Oh my God. I was freaking out. So honestly, don't let just anybody do your hair because that could set you back a shit ton because they could just mess up the whole process or the whole journey of your hair by popping off your ends or doing anything to your hair that will damage your hair that you wouldn't usually do to your hair. Uh, someone's using a fine tooth comb in your hair and you have 4C hair. <sighs> Cut that out. Like... There are certain things that you should not be doing to people with natural hair. And using a blow dryer on high heat, I, would, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, combing, using the blow dryer comb to comb out your hair. Uh, using a fine tooth comb to comb out your hair. People say that you shouldn't even use a comb to comb out your hair, but sometimes it's really hard to do that. But like using a certain kind of brush to comb out your hair, like some things should not be used in natural hair, okay? So just be mindful of who you go, uh, who you allow to style your hair and who you allow to do your hair because it can make a huge difference in the process or your natural hair journey in general. Number five, I'm still a culprit of this. I would recommend not to comb your hair or manipulate your hair while your hair is dry. Now, this is where I find the most breakage um, when I comb my hair when it's dry. Like, I honestly sometimes just have no patience. And so, if you find that you're too tired to do your hair or you really just don't want to do your hair, I would recommend that you don't do your hair instead of you doing your hair that one time and messing up your whole journey. Because it's so easy to break off your ends, it's so easy to get knots and to just comb through them and break off your ends even more which could damage your whole hair shaft and just make everything a shit show. So I would recommend again to have moisture in your hair before you ever even try to manipulate it or comb through it or do anything with it because that will save your hair. Number six, I recommend to minimize the amount of usage you have with combs or brushes. Again, it depends on your hairstyle or your hair um, your hair texture. I have 4C texture as you guys know so it's very tight coils that I have. So if I use a comb or if I use a brush my hair is definitely going to break because I can't actually get to those single strand knots myself. I'm just breaking it off with the comb as I comb through my hair. Um, which I know but I usually get over uh, real quick. But again I realized since I just started really using the comb throughout my hair my hair is not necessarily growing past my shoulders. shoulders. So I am going to consciously make the decision moving forward to try to moisturize my hair before manipulating my hair and I'm going to try to manipulate my hair with my fingers as opposed to using comb or a brush. I'm gonna try. You guys should try too. Have you guys, if you guys actually don't use a comb or a brush in your hair, comment below and let me know and tell me how long it takes you to do your hair. Because that's, I think that's what I am most hesitant about. I feel like I need to be more patient. I definitely do need to be more patient because I'm very impatient. I'm a very impatient person. But that's something I'm going to work on. Comment below if you do it and tell me if you've actually found a difference with your own hair. 
which I definitely have found from my friends who actually don't use a comb or anything and they have my hair texture, their hair is always long as hell. So it just takes time and patience. So the final tip is the seventh tip that I have for you guys today. And I would recommend to not frequently trim your hair. If you're honestly trimming your hair every three months or every two months, how are you going to see the growth? I never understood that. You keep cutting your hair, keep cutting your hair, keep cutting your hair. How are you going to see the growth? Only trim your hair if you see that you need to trim your hair. If you can tell that your hair is very shallow at the ends in comparison to the rest of your hair, trim your hair. But if you don't need to trim your hair, don't just trim your hair because it's a three month mark. Don't do that. When I found that I trim my hair twice a year, I found my hair grew the most. Especially after I had my protective styles in, my hair was growing, it was growing, and I didn't, I even asked my friend to trim my hair one time. She was like, there's no need for me to trim your hair because your hair looks super healthy and it, it was all flowing all throughout my whole hair like it what there was no thin parts or anything so i would recommend reducing the amount of trim you do hold up stop hold up on the trimming because it's not even that necessary um and just trim as you find it to be necessary you don't even need to trim off an inch all the time it doesn't have to be a consistent amount that you trim just trim what you find is necessary based on how your hair is growing out of your scalp and how your hair looks at the ends okay so once I take out these braids, I am planning on doing the first ever trim that I've done to my natural hair on my own. So make sure you guys stick around so you guys could catch those videos as well and see how I trim my hair. But those are all the tips that I have for you guys in terms of learning from the mistakes that I personally made um, with my own natural hair. A lot of the tips that I've shared, I definitely still need to work on some of those. However, with the tips that I share, I hope they have helped. They are going to be able to help you be more productive with your own natural hair growth. And again, if you have any other tips that you want to share with people, comment below and let us know. We will definitely appreciate it. And make sure that you guys subscribe to my channel. Share this video with friends and families who you think would benefit from knowing mistakes that they should not make with their own natural hair if they're going through the natural hair journey. And also give this video a thumbs up so that I know that you guys like the content that I'm putting out. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I think I spit all over my lips, but that's okay because I'm a real person and that shit happens. I will catch you guys in my next video. Deuces.